Hi, I'm Joseph. This channel focuses on economic and business concepts targeted towards sophisticated investors. Remember to like, subscribe, and hit the bell if you too are interested in becoming a sophisticated investor. Today we'll be looking into the nitty gritty of the Russian and Ukrainian bond markets to get an insight into the ongoing state of the conflict there. In this video, we're going to cover quite a few topics. First, we're going to cover bonds and their yields and what those yields say about an economy and how those yields relate to the conflict. Then we're going to cover credit default swaps, what the implied probability of default means, and how credit default swaps relate to the conflict. Then we're going to discuss ratings agencies, uh, what they are, and what they think about the conflict, which might be quite different than what bond investors are thinking. Then finally, we'll discuss some of the potential outcomes of the conflict from an economic sense. Will there be a bailout? Will there be an economic collapse? And of course, I'll consider your thoughts in the comments too, and I'll be happy to reply to them. Understanding Bond Yields Simply, bonds are financial instruments purchased for a price that then pay the investor interest periodically. The yield is the yearly interest paid divided by the value of the bond. This is often displayed as a percentage. For example, if a bond is purchased for $100 and pays $10 in interest annually, it has a 10% current yield. Typically, as the risk of default or currency disruption increases, the bond's rate increases. So what are the bond markets saying about the conflict in Ukraine? What is interesting is that despite the large amount of media and financial reporting showing the dramatic, deleterious effects of Western sanctions on Russia, the bond market is showing a slightly different picture. Let's take a look. What we have here is a beautifully colored graph of the Ukrainian and Russian bond rates. We're only able to get one, two, and three year bond rates for Ukraine. Perhaps I could get more information if I had access to a Bloomberg terminal. So make sure you smash like and subscribe to help grow the channel so we can keep providing you with more in-depth research. As you can see, Ukrainian bond rates are extremely high even when compared to many third world countries. At publication, the yields are near 70% on the two and three year notes. They're also significantly higher than the Russian bond yields, despite the massive sanctions on Russia. This likely means that bond purchasers believe that Ukraine will default on these bond payments as they are demanding atmospheric yields. Overall, the free market, which are bond investors in this case, do not seem to have as much faith in the Ukraine conflict as the media and financial reporting institutions do. So what are the bond insurance issuers saying about the Ukrainian and Russian bond markets? Let's take a look. First, we have to understand credit default swaps. Simply, credit default swaps, or CDSs, are insurance on bonds. They will pay an investor if the bond misses an interest payment or if the bond falls into default. The implied probability of default is an estimation of the risk of default, non-payment in this case, of the bond. See a link in the description for how it's calculated. It's a little bit more complex, but it's worth learning. CDS prices rise as the risk of default rises. Think of this as purchasing insurance on a home. If your home is in an area that experiences floods, robberies, forest fires, and tornadoes, your insurance premiums will be high. Similarly, if your bonds are issued in a country with disorder, the CDS prices are likely to be high. So what are the CDS issuers, that's the insurance companies, saying about Ukraine and Russia? Let's take a look. Both countries are being priced with a significant default risk, around 7% for Russia and 9% for Ukraine. What we can see is that Ukraine is being priced by the CDS issuers as about 33% more likely to default than Russia. So here's where it gets interesting. If the bond rates are higher in Ukraine and the CDS implied rate of default is higher in Ukraine, that means that investors are not confident the results of the Ukrainian conflict will be favorable to the Ukrainian economy. A strong and liquid CDS market is vital to the function of a modern economy Many of the frontier market economic leaders that I've interacted with say that the accuracy and availability of CDS instruments are invaluable. For this reason, the CDS market is a good metric for the health of an economy and the health of a nation. 
Bond and CDS investors are not the only ones who have opinions on the state of Ukraine, though, as we shall see. Understanding ratings agencies. Simply, ratings agencies are private companies that give scores to bonds and other instruments depending upon their risk. The greater the risk, the worse the rating. The main ratings agencies are Moody's, S&P, and Fitch. Most of the time, if a ratings agency downgrades a credit rating, interest rates will rise. Keep in mind, ratings agencies have received criticism because they are typically for-profit companies. Bond issuers pay them to rate their bonds, and some ratings agencies are even publicly traded companies, meaning that they have to keep their public image positive and their shareholders happy. But what are these ratings agencies saying about the Ukraine conflict? Let's find out. Both Russia and Ukraine have their bonds rated below the junk bond territory. Junk bonds are just a term to mean that ratings agencies believe that they are risky and not investment grade. Usually, junk bonds have a much higher interest rate because of their risk. What we do see is that all three ratings agencies rate the Ukrainian bonds higher than Russian. This is contrary to the bond market and CDS market, which both indicate Ukraine is much more risky than Russia. That's a bit peculiar. So what are the potential outcomes of the Ukrainian bond market, the Russian bond market, and the overall Ukraine conflict? Well, a bailout of the Ukrainian economy by the West is certainly possible, perhaps sending stimulus and money instead of men and materiel. An economic collapse of Ukraine post-conflict is possible. That certainly seems to be what bond markets are pricing in right now. And a faster Russian recovery than expected may also occur. It goes without saying that the conflict in Ukraine is a human tragedy. In the description below, I will include a link to donate to the Red Cross to support the Ukrainian people. I will try my best to personally respond to any questions or comments left below. Please remember to like this video and subscribe to help grow this channel and to continue receiving economic, business, and finance deep dives. My next video will be on inflation's surprising impact on the modern pension fund. What are your thoughts about this research? I'd love to hear in the comments below what you believe will be the economic outcome of the Ukrainian conflict. If you have a topic you're interested in, please leave it below. And remember to like, subscribe, and hit the bell. Thanks for watching. Bye.